I'm going to talk about juice pasteurization. Juice is produced all over the world, and there is indication that a lot of the juice might be overprocessed. Overprocesses may have an impact on the product quality, and it may also be a waste of energy and money. Let me take you through our research study. I will cover two main areas. First out is the microbial deactivation. You will see both the theory behind as well as how we've done our tests and verifications at customer site. The second area is product quality, covering taste panels, vitamin C tests and color comparisons. In today's industry practice, fruit juices are often pasteurized twice before reaching the consumer. The purpose of these heat treatments is to make the juice product stable during its planned storage time. The primary pasteurization is done immediately after juice extraction or as a first step in the evaporation to make fruit juice concentrate. The main purpose is to inactivate enzyme from the fruit. The activation of enzyme is done at 95 degrees to 98 degrees for 10 to 30 seconds. During inactivation of enzymes, microorganisms are also killed, making the use or concentrate commercially sterile. A second pasteurization is often done prior to filling juice into consumer packages. This second pasteurization is done to kill recontaminated microorganisms. Not from concentrate juice might be recontaminated during bulk storage, and juice that is made from concentrate might be recontaminated during reconstitution with water. Tetrapak's current recommendation for the heat treatment of the second pasteurization for juice, nectar and still drink with a pH of less than 4.2 is 95 degrees with 15 seconds holding time. Can the heat treatment in the second pasteurization of juice, nectar and steel drinks be reduced to save energy and reduce carbon footprint? Is it then possible to reduce the heat treatment, avoid the overprocessing and the waste of energy and money? Based on microbial killing data from literature and experience, it would be possible to do a reduction of the heat treatment in the second pasteurization. We have to look at the relevant microorganisms that are able to grow at a pH of less than 4.2 and we need to find a target organism for testing. Let's have a closer look of the microorganism of concern for the second pasteurization. Yeasts are commonly found in fruit juices. Among the most common ones are Saccharomyces, Zygosaccharomyces and Rhodotorola. Vegetative cells of yeast are not very heat resistant and are easily inactivated by pasteurization. But some yeasts can produce ascospores that are more heat resistant and that would be of concern for the second pasteurization of juice. Molds are also commonly found in juices and most of the molds are not very heat resistant, for example, Aspergillus, Penicillium and Fusarium molds. But there are heat resistant molds like Bisoclamus fulva and Neosatoria fisheri that will not be inactivated at 95 degrees for 15 seconds and require a tougher heat treatment. There are some acid tolerant bacteria like Lactobacillus and Leuconostoc that can grow and multiply in juice, but these are not very heat resistant and are easily inactivated by pasteurization. For food safety, pathogenic bacteria has to be considered. Fruit juices are low risk foods due to the low pH that will inhibit growth of most pathogenic bacteria. But some pathogens can survive for a certain period of time even if they cannot multiply, for example Salmonella, Listeria and E. coli or 157H7. To secure food safety, pasteurization conditions should never be lower than the milk pasteurization of 72 degrees for 15 seconds, which is sufficient to destroy pathogenic microorganisms. Some bacteria can form heat-resistant spores that will not be destroyed by the current heat load of 95 degrees for 15 seconds. Most bacterial spores will not grow in high acid products with a pH of less than 4.6. But some acid-tolerant bacteria that produce spores are able to grow at low pH. For example, Alicyclobacillus can grow at a pH of 2, Sporolactobacillus can grow at a pH of 3.5, and there is a group of bacteria that can grow at a pH of 3.8. For this latter group, a growth study was conducted at Tetrapack to verify the minimum pH for multiplication. 
In the test showed no germination and growth of any of the tested species at a pH of less than 4.2. There is a theoretical possibility to reduce the heat treatment of 95 degrees for 15 seconds in the second pasteurization. There are some very heat resistant organisms that cannot be inactivated with today's heat treatment for the second pasteurization if present in the concentrate. So these will demand a higher treatment than the 95 degrees for 15 seconds. Based on the heat resistant mentioned before and the growth tests with bacterial spores, ascospores of the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae were chosen as target organisms during the inactivation tests. The ascospores of uh, yeast is heat resistant but are destroyed at 95 degrees for 15 seconds. They are commonly present in juice and they are commonly used as the target organisms for the processing of fruit juices. Three challenge tests were conducted. Yeast ascospores were added to apple juice made from concentrate with a pH of 3.8. Each batch was inoculated with 2 times 10 to the 7 yeast ascospores of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The juice was processed at the product development center in Lund at three different temperatures, 65 degrees for 15 seconds, 72 degrees for 15 seconds, and 80 degrees for 15 seconds. After processing, the juice was packed in tetrabric aseptic packages of 250 milliliter. The packages were incubated for three weeks at ambient temperature, around 20 to 22 degrees centigrade. During the incubation, the packages were inspected for gas formation. And after the three weeks incubation, packages were opened and checked for turbidity. Gas formation and turbidity is a sign of growth of the test organisms. Packages with gas formation and turbidity were streaked at OSA agar plates to confirm growth of the test organism. At 72 degrees and 80 degrees for 15 seconds, all the packages were commercially sterile. And at 65 degrees for 15 seconds, all the packages showed growth of the test organism. And the results of the challenge test confirmed the theoretical calculations based on killing data found in the literature and show that it is possible to reduce the heat treatment of use to 80 degrees with the 15 seconds holding time. To verify the results from the challenge test in the pilot plot, a test was made at commercial site at Valio Oy in Finland. 4,000 liters of orange juice was prepared and the initial load of microorganisms in the juice was 90 coliforming units per milliliter. One batch of 4,000 liters of orange juice was pasteurized at 78 degrees for 22 seconds, which corresponds to heat treatment at 80 degrees centigrade for 9.5 seconds. That is a lower heat treatment than 80 degrees for 15 seconds. The juice was packed in 16,000 Tetra Prisma aseptic packages. The packages were stored at room temperature for three weeks prior to inspection. None of the packages had any sign of gas formation due to unsterility. 1,043 packages were transported to an internal laboratory at Tetra Pak in Lund, where they were opened and streaked at orange serum agar. All of them were commercially sterile. The results confirms the findings from the in-house test that 80 degrees for 15 seconds give enough heat load in the second pasteurization to produce a commercially sterile product. So can we give new process recommendations for the second pasteurization of juice, nectar and still drinks? Yes, we can. The pH have to be less than 4.2. For nectar, you have to secure a turbulent flow. And if the juice contains pulp, it has to be less than 10% of pulp. The content of Alicyclobacillus or Bisuclamus should be negative in 10 grams or 10 milliliters of product. Is there an impact on the product quality by lowering the temperature of the second heat treatment? And is it also possible to increase delta T 
to increase the flexibility in design of heat exchangers for juice processing. The current recommended delta T for juice is 5 degrees centigrade. An increase of delta T would gain flexibility at capacity changes and more flexibility during heat exchanger design. To find the answers on delta T impact on product quality, tests were made in a pilot plant. Five different batches of orange juice was prepared. The orange juice was heat treated at 80 degrees and 95 degrees for 15 seconds, with delta T ranging from 3 degrees up to 25 degrees. The orange juice was packed in tetrabric aseptic packages. The packages were stored at ambient temperature at about 20 to 22 degrees centigrade. And during the storage, evaluation of taste, visual appearance and vitamin C content was made. Packages that had been incubated for six weeks at ambient temperature were sent to an external taste panel at Ipsos Marketing in Kohansta. The taste test was done as a triangle test with 24 replies to each test. The tested samples was the mildest versus the toughest heat treatment, the impact of a small increase in delta T at the same processing temperature, and a large increase in delta T at the same processing temperature. And no significant differences in taste could be discovered by the test panel. An internal test evaluation was also made, immediate after production and once a month during the six-month storage time at ambient temperature. Also, these tests were done as triangle tests, and it was the mildest versus the toughest heat treatment that was tested. No difference uh, could be detected between the different samples. So our conclusion is that neither decrease in processing temperature from 95 degrees to 80 degrees in the second pasteurization, nor an increase in delta T had an impact on taste of orange juice that is made from concentrate. Is there an impact of the process temperature and the increased delta T on the vitamin C reduction? Normally, vitamin C decreases due to oxygen transmission through the packages and anaerobic degradation. The vitamin C content was analyzed by HPLC at Eurofins after three and a half and six months of storage. Our conclusions are that there is no difference between 80 degrees or 95 degrees heat treatment there was also no difference between the samples produced with low delta T or with a high delta T. Is there any effect on the visual appearance of orange juice? The visual appearance was evaluated once a month and photographed using DJI at consistent light conditions when the juice has been stored for three and seven months. The orange juice was overall darker after seven months of storage than after three months of storage. At each time of evaluation, no difference between the samples could be detected. Our conclusions are that heat treatment reduction from 95 degrees for 15 seconds to 80 degrees for 15 seconds will have no negative or positive impact on product quality of orange juice made from concentrate. A delta T of orange juice from concentrate can be increased from 5 degrees centigrade up to 25 degrees centigrade without affecting taste, visual appearance or vitamin C content. So is it then possible to save energy with a reduction of from 95 degrees to 80 degrees and how much can be saved? If we have a production scenario with a tetraterm aseptic drink, that produces juice with a bricks of 12 at a capacity of 22,000 liters per hour, or 15 hours production a day in two shifts, five days a week and 50 weeks a year. There are savings to make in the energy consumption by lowering the pasteurization from 95 degrees for 15 seconds to 80 degrees for 50 seconds. There will be a 19% cost reduction for energy consumption per year and the carbon footprint per 1,000 litre of juice can be reduced with 20%. There's also a possibility to increase delta T that will give a flexibility during heat exchanger design and a flexibility during changes in capacity. For more information, please contact us at Tetrapack.